Okay. Um, so, yeah, thanks, Sebastian and Helen. Um, the next one is going to be Dmitry Barishov talking about uh, MIPI DSI power states and how they work or don't work with DRM. Thanks. Yeah, more of the don't work. So this is uh, this has been on, on in some discussion and in some uh, troubles for the last, I would say, couple of years. Uh, I would like to try to summarize what uh, was on my to-do list, and maybe you will help me to select, or maybe you'll come, we'll come with another approach, because currently I'm proposing two, two, two not so good solutions. So yeah, uh, unless you, uh, well, pr probably you, uh, most of you do know that, but MePDSI is, a, is a one of the uh, display buses. It is uh, to use packets. It, uh, it has several lanes. Uh, differential signals or three-wire signals, whatever. Uh, the, what is important for us is that uh, it's a bus. It's a bus. You can have uh, multiple peripherals connected to it. Usually, it is just one, but uh, they can be virtual channels, and there is a, a thing called uh, sublinks where you split the bus for several displays. And it, unlike uh, what we are used to in the DRM, it has uh, three bus states, completely off uh, clock on and uh, the uh, low, uh, low power mode where the uh, slow messages go uh, uh, over the bus and video, full video on where it is in high speed mode, uh, where uh, all of the lanes are on and when the video stream is actually going. Uh, how does that map to DRM and to the uh, breach and uh, panel uh, API. So I'm using breach uh, names, but the same maps one to one to the panel, DRM panel. So I hope you, I hope you don't mind that. So uh, oh, the obvious thing was okay. First we enable the video stream, we power on the bus, and we then after that send the commands. Yeah, that didn't fully work, and that didn't work for Sun4e, uh, if I remember correctly, because. On that platform, we cannot send uh, any of the D uh, DSI commands after starting the video stream. And of course, it does not at least, uh, show how to shut down the panel, because yeah, we should do that in other way around, and we still are uh, sending the stream, so still no commands. And so this was the try to which uh, some of the platforms, including MSM, approached or uh, used. Uh, power on the bus and uh, run the uh, MIPI clock uh, on the, uh, when from the mode set of the DSI host bridge, then send the, uh, the comments from the peripheral, from the uh, panel, then go back and go back uh, to the encoder to enable video stream, and uh, uh, during the shutdown, try shutting down the panel at some point. But then uh, oh, it almost worked. It was not fully symmetrical, it was not uh, clean, but then there are some special panels, so for example, the parade one, which caused a lot of troubles, I think, for one, yeah, for one of the persons in the auditory. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, a, bri a, bri a DSI to EDP bridge. Uh, because it required to be programmed before turning the DSI clock on. And there is no place to do that in this, uh, with this approach. So after uh, some back and forth, uh, we landed uh, uh, the uh, yet another approach. The ugly, well, I call it ugly, so sorry for the author, uh, pre-enable pref first flag with unpronounceable name, uh, which basically told that uh, well, if you compare two things, we were going first peripheral, or then uh, the host, then uh, turn on the encoder, and then uh, call enables uh, other way around. So what this lag told, yeah, we should first turn on the, the lower layer and then pre-enable the upper layer. So this allowed us to power on the DSI bus first if the panel or if the bridge required that. Then turn a video stream, then uh, do some final programming and undo the same thing in the, uh, on the shutdown path, on the disabled path. Uh, troubles, yeah, troubles of course. Uh, there is no way for the host, for the DSI controller to understand if the bridge uh, sets uh, this flag or not. Or if it did not, didn't it set it uh, on purpose, uh, like parade? Or didn't it set it because it was not yet uh, 
told to, to set this flag. So we had a lot of uh, issues with some of the panel drivers, which were supposed to set this flag, but uh, did not, and there is no way to negotiate that properly. And the second point is that it does not cover the case of the multiple devices on a bus, because, okay, the first panel, the first bridge comes up, uh, turns on the bus, and uh, uh, what happens if the, uh, if the bridge on the other sublink wants to do something before switching on the clocks or before uh, enabling the video stream. There is no way to synchronize that. So uh, this is the approach that I have been toying with for some time. Uh, this is to move the control over the SI bus states uh, from the uh, DRM call chains to actually host driver. And uh, let DSI host uh, call into the panels or into the bridges and tell, yeah, we are going to power on, do your stuff. And we can do this uh, for all devices on a bus. So if uh, this, this makes it symmetric for uh, several panels or for several bridges on the sublinks, uh, there we do not have a necessity to synchronize them. It's already done. On the DRM thing, it, it is not so easily mappable, well, not so naturally mappable, because uh, DRM no longer controls the panels. They're enabled by the host or no longer controls the bridges. They, go, they get enabled by the host or they get programmed by the host calling into that driver. But still, I think that that's a good thing. Uh, problems. So it does not, well, so first, good things. It doesn't require any kind of feature negotiation. You just call into the, uh, into the panels. You can enable that on, uh, first on the host, then on the, bar, on the panels. It provides uh, a state separation. It can handle multiple panels or multiple bridges. Uh, but it still requires rewriting all the hosts and all the clients, all the, pa all the drivers. And it also, uh, well, I said it enables all the panels simultaneously. But what if we do not want to do that? So uh, the question is if we, if we actually want to enable just one of the panels on, this, on, the, on the link. And the last question which I was not able to solve is how, to, how this maps to uh, ultra low power state. Well, in fact, I should admit, I could not fully understand how the ULPS at all should be, uh, should be handled or if we should care about it at all. So that's a question to you, uh, because maybe you know more than, uh, than me, or hopefully you know more than me. And another approach that also has been uh, in my head for some time. Okay, this really looks like the runtime power management, because yeah, if we have the panel that is going up, uh, it can uh, do whatever stuff it needs, then it can tell to the host, yeah, dear host, please come up resume, and then we can start sending the uh, DSI comments. Uh, and the same goes in the, uh, sh in the disable direction. In the disable case, yeah, we first uh, send our disable commands, we uh, put down the host, and then after that we can disable our clocks, we can disable regulators, we can do something else to shut down the bridge. And, but again, it still requires to re rewrite in everything, and it does not solve the case of sublinks, it does not solve the ULPS. Uh, on the other hand, and uh, last but not least, it also puts some special uh, note or special meaning to the DSI host being on and off. So you, uh, currently, the uh, host, uh, DSI host can do whatever it wants with the runtime power state. It can enable itself or it can disable itself when it wants to. Uh, with this approach, uh, now the panel, the bridge controls, and it means that, yeah, if the host is on, then we are ready to send the, pa uh, the, the comments. I kn oh, if you want to point that out here, I remember that in the documentation for the DSI, we have a special comment that telling that, yeah, the MEPDSI transfer should work at all the time. That's not true. That's probably not true. I think we now have a special comment for that, but still, uh, that's, well, that's apparently not true. So I would really like, yeah, I would really like to hear your comments. I would really like to, to uh, see uh, 
arguments uh, or, or any, appro any comments regarding these two approaches, because otherwise I'm just going to send uh, this, this approach in a few weeks, hopefully, and uh, look how it maps to everybody else. Yeah, Doug? I would at least wonder, you know, you have DSI bus callbacks. I'm curious, would it be better to not make this DSI specific and just say, hey, for all bridge devices, you add an extra mode that's, you know, power on that's different than pre-enabled or something. Some, essentially add something new to all bridges so that you don't have a weird specific DSI thing. Maybe that would cause more people to shout and yell in flame, but, you know, having DSI specific code is also not ideal. Yeah, I think that was discussed uh, at the same time as we were as, uh, the pre-enabled pre first got landed. Uh, I don't think, I, if I remember correctly, that, that approach was not appreciated by, uh, by the DRAM uh, community and by the maintainers because, yeah, it does not really map to anybody else. And uh, there, is, well, there is literally no significant point in, uh, in doing that. So if you, if you see, this is not the DRM calls. This is really a calls to MIPDSI device. So yeah, I, I, uh, the, uh, the problem and the approach with this, yeah, we, we do no longer call uh, uh, DRM panel functions. Well, we, we call them uh, through the uh, usual DRM bridge chain calls, uh, but uh, this is no longer required, or this is no longer a, a required part of the chain. So uh, most of the drivers will not or can skip sending of the comments from the panel enable or panel pre-enable. Yeah, I think part of the issue has been that so far we've tried to, like from a device model perspective, we've tried to model the power state and handle them both at the bus level, like device model bus, and through the framework itself. And so we've been trying to shoehorn a lot of the power state management into KMS, but it's never actually been in place in Linux. All the bus power management for any other bus in Linux is done at the bus level. And so it's difficult to get it to work because we're basically doing what nobody else is doing. Um, so I guess from what you were saying, uh, I don't have any question. Please send that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, which one would do, do you prefer, this one or the RPM one? Because they are both moving uh, yeah, decisions I to think, the. So I'm. I haven't really thought about the runtime PM one, but I'm kind of concerned about, like, so. What does that mean for a DSI host or DSI device? Um, to be powered on. Like, how does that translate? To which power state does that translate? And so I'm kind of concerned that we will have something inconsistent and like some device will need something and some other will need something else. Like, probably some, some DSI device will need to be in high speed state. Uh, some other will map that to just having the clock lane turned on. And so, like, how can we maintain a consistency at the framework level, basically? And I think with um, the, that one, uh, the one you have currently on display, um, it's easier to maintain that consistency than it is for runtime PM. And then all your concerns about um, changing the API, uh, rewriting the clients, um, even like enabling multiple panels, I'm pretty sure we can do something about all of them writing compatibility layers, um, adding some kind of mux driver to handle multiple drivers, maybe, I don't know. Um, but it's, it looks to me like those um, cons are actually much more manageable than they are for, well, both the other solutions you presented, I guess. Okay, uh, my only point for the multiple panels, well, if there are several panels of the same DSI link, I was really hoping that uh, if the hardware engineer is saying that they are, uh, they are related, so we would bring them up anyway. <laughs> but well, I, I, I don't, I have, I, well, the problem with the sublinks is that I don't really have a use case. So most of our use cases just use a 
Oh, in, in the best case, it is just a single DSI to DSI connection. In the worst case, it is a bonded DSI with two hosts and two, two bridges or two panels or two parts of the panel. But the, I have not seen a use case for sublinks actually. Well, or it could be like if we want to go insane, I guess the sanest way to go about it would be to have multiple devices on separate virtual channels. But I don't really see a use case for that and we would still have different virtual channels to differ differentiate and we, would mean we wouldn't be able to send, well, depending on the best capacity, but, but we might not be able to send to both at the same time, so we would have to choose, but we still would be able to choose because, yeah, we have something to differentiate which panel we want to send to. Yeah, the, the, the problem is that uh, with this approach, after the pre-enable finishes, all the panels on the sublink are on and running. Even if we don't, if we, if we even if we don't intend to send the stream to them, okay. So that's my that's my major concern with this. Yeah. Just even ignoring the implementation from a conceptual standpoint, if you don't enable all the panels at once, and one panel wants to be in high speed mode and one panel needs to be in low power mode because now you're bringing the second panel up later, what what state should the bus be in? Like, do we? request it to go back to low power mode, but then, you know, like, is there some sort of, you know, reference counting, or like, how do we manage the state of the bus at that point? Uh, yes, so, uh, <laughs> the, uh, we do not support uh, sublinks uh, from the DRM point of view yet, uh, so there will be, most likely there will be a ref count if we get to that point. Uh, for the uh, for just going back and forth uh, to LPM mode, that's what we currently do when we have to send the low power commands like set brightness, which is usually sent uh, in the LPM mode. Yes, it is just set the flag manually on the device, call the transfer, send, uh, switch it off again. So, yeah, th this is a little bit ugly, but this is what we currently have, and I I don't think we should change that part. Yeah, the. Uh, a common a question to more hardware people or to um, actual users of strange hardware any kind of comments regarding the ultra low power states and uh, if we should care about them at all or uh, please forget okay silence probably means please, please forget <laughs> okay then that, i think that's it unless i uh, you know steven has anything to say about run runtime Okay. <laughs> no, okay. okay. Then thank you.